Now, before we dive in, if you find my videos useful, make sure to click that subscribe button and also make sure to click that bell icon on the side to get notified every time I upload a new video. And of course, if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, make sure to follow me on all at Saki Tech Online, also for the latest updates. All right, let's dive in. Hey guys, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of hidden features on One UI 2.5. Now, I will let you know, this phone right here is a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra that I'm using to demonstrate, but these features are gonna work on any smartphone that is, in fact, running one UI 2.5. So let's dive in and get started right away. Now the very first feature I wanna talk about has to do with the actual camera application. So let me launch the camera application, okay? And in the past, before One UI 2.5, when you switched from one mode to another one, for example, from video to the photo mode, when you swiped over, what would happen is you would get a little vibrational feedback. It's a haptic feedback to let you know that you did something, the phone vibrates a little bit. And of course, this vibration takes away some of the battery. Now what you can do is you can turn on any kind of uh, haptic vibrational feedbacks on the camera application, including uh, when you press the shutter button, when you pull it down to take a burst shot and all that stuff. So all you do is you tap on settings, all right? And then you go all the way down and what you do is you disable touch vibrations, and that's going to kill the vibrations, and also, if you use your camera a lot, it's gonna save you some battery, because it takes juice to vibrate the phone. Now, the next thing is not really a hidden feature, but let me really quickly show you what I'm talking about. It is a brand new menu that is now in the camera application, and that's settings to keep. So if I tap on this one, I have three options. Basically, if you apply certain settings to your camera application, you can let the phone keep those settings so you don't have to set them again and again, especially if you're using them a lot. For example, I'm gonna enable camera mode right here. I'm gonna go back, okay? I'm gonna switch over to the video mode. Now let's say I use the video mode more than the photo mode. So now when I exit my camera and go back into it, it's gonna launch at the actual video mode instead of uh, defaulting to the photo mode. So that's the setting right over here, okay? It says settings to keep. You can do the same thing with your selfie angles. So if I go to my selfie camera, for example, all right, let's go to the selfie camera. I've got two actual angles. I've got the wide angle and I've got the more narrow angle. Again, I can remember the setting that I chose so if I keep it here, let me just go back to settings real quick. Settings to keep, let's enable that. Now let me go back over here, where in this menu, I'm gonna exit the camera, okay? I'm gonna go back to it, and as you can see, it remembers the angle instead of defaulting to the narrow angle. So that's fantastic, all right? Now let's go back, and one more thing I did forget to uh, show you again here is if you go to settings, you also have the settings to keep the filters option. So if you are in the photo mode, and you enable the filter, it's gonna keep that filter if you want. Okay, now this one I would keep disabled. I don't need this one either, but that one is good because I do use the video mode more often than the photo mode. Now the next feature has to do with the Samsung Notes application. So let's launch the Notes application, and what's gonna happen is when you tap on this button right here and go into the actual settings, when you swipe down, again, we have a brand new option that says handwriting language. So when you click this, you have a bunch of languages you can choose for handwriting recognition, and you can download a whole lot others over here. I can download Turkish if I want to, all right? Now when I go in, create a brand new note, and write something uh, with the S Pen or my finger, uh, the phone actually recognizes all those languages that I chose, so the handwriting recognition doesn't just work on English language, it works on any language that you want to choose uh, from this option right here. This is a great option for people who are not natively English speaking, but you have some other languages that you wanna uh, use your phone for, so you get all these options, okay? You can just pick the one that you want to use for that particular handwriting session, and then go back to English when you want. 
All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, the next thing has to do with multitasking. All right, so I'm gonna bring up the multitasking pane here. I'm gonna tap on this button right over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a split screen view. Okay, so far it's nothing new. Everybody knows about it. Now let's pick calendar and make a split screen happening. Now what you can do is you can tap on the blue line and now you get two options. These are options that used to exist before. Now they're back. The first one, you can swap the applications quickly. So boom, boom, all right, that's fantastic. But the other one is the interesting one. So if I tap on this guy, I can click on plus and that creates a multi-window app pair that gets saved into the actual edge screen. So when I go to my edge screen, all right, you can see that we have that new multi-pair window added. So let's exit from here for a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna X this out, close everything. Let's say I wanna quickly create a multi-session between calculator and calendar. I just pull this in now. This is the apps edge panel. I click on this, boom, it's ready to go. And you can create this with anything that you want, all right? You can make YouTube, Google Maps, calculator, Chrome, whatever. You just bring, on, bring in the applications you wanna use, then you tap this button, tap on plus, goes into your edge panel. If it's already existing, it's gonna say, you already created this app combo. All right, so that is absolutely fantastic. Let's move on to the next tactic. Now the next feature has to do, again, with Samsung Notes. This is pretty cool. So I'm gonna launch my Samsung Notes application, all right? I'm gonna go into this, uh, note right over here and as you can see we have some links and numbers these were the ones that i typed in and these were the ones that i used uh, my s pen to write or i can just use my finger to write now here's the new thing if you hover over one of these features what you're going to see is you are going to see some icons right next to it that icons tell you uh, tells you what you can do with that particular format that you wrote so it knows that this one is a link, so it says click it, it's gonna take you to the actual website, all right? Now this one, it knows it's a phone number, so when you hover, it shows the little icon, you tap on the icon, takes you to the actual phone. Now this only works uh, on the things that you wrote, either with the S Pen or also, of course, uh, with your finger if you don't have a Samsung Galaxy Note device. So that's that. Let's move on to the next tactic. All right, so the final thing I wanna talk about in this video is the fact that One UI 2.5, even with Android 10, now supports third-party launchers, full-screen gestures, such as for Nova Launcher. So let me go into my Nova Launcher right over here. I'm gonna tap it, it's gonna enable it. I'm gonna go here into my settings, uh, off the Nova settings. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this as a default launcher for my smartphone. So I'm gonna tap on this guy, I'm gonna go into Nova Launcher, and we have it as default. And now we have the button. So far, everything is perfect, no problem. With Android 10, if you went full screen, it's not gonna work. But now with One UI 2.5, it bypasses that 10 limitation, and it actually works. So if I went to my display, and if I go over into my uh, navigation bar, I can choose the full screen swipe gestures and they are gonna show up right here. I can go home in my Nova launcher. That's just fantastic. Now going back to the settings, display, uh, you also further can go in and you can customize uh, the full screen gestures on top of the standard option. So in the past, this button was grayed out and this was unpickable. Now it's unlocked for people that do use third party launchers. And I know there's a lot of you guys that do that. Now, it doesn't work with every single launcher. It is working 90% with Nova Launcher, okay? I just prefer the buttons. And that was the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video. Make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech and stay tuned for more videos to come. For now guys, have a fantastic day. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. 
And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.